Hi everyone, welcome back to Ground and Haven. Today we have a few things we're gonna plant out in the garden. We are going to be transplanting our eggplant seedlings and we also have some things to direct sow. We're going to be sowing our peanuts and also some corn. I think these three things are pretty much the last things that are gonna go out into the garden for the summer. So that's really cool because that means that our garden is pretty much full now and now we just have to wait for everything to grow. The last few weeks we've just been working on transplanting all of these seedlings that we started from seed and it's been a lot of work but it's also been really fun and I'm really glad that everything is pretty much done it's kind of funny though because I am also in the mode of getting ready for our fall crops believe it or not right now it's the middle of May and a lot of fall crops need to be started in June or July so I actually just placed an order recently I know I said I wasn't gonna buy any more seeds and that's kind of true because I didn't want to get any more things for the spring and summer garden because I knew the garden was already gonna be packed but I am starting to plan things to plant for the fall and I'm getting those seeds now so that if they take a couple of weeks to ship I'll have those seeds ready for when it's time to actually start them. So I know that's kind of jumping ahead but I kind of just wanted to throw that out there because as gardeners we always have to be thinking one season ahead. So even while we are planting out our summer things I am already getting ready for the fall crops. But that's not going to be for another month or so so today we're just going to deal with our summer garden and we're going to plant those things that I mentioned. Here's a look at our eggplant seedlings. They're pretty tall and haven't started putting on any flowers yet, which is really good. And now's a really nice time to plant them because we are definitely getting very steadily hot days and eggplant really does like really hot weather. I think this weekend we're actually gonna get up to like 95 degrees, which is crazy. It's gonna be like summer temperatures already here soon. And the eggplant is really going to love it. I also have some melons here. These are just a couple that I have left that I still need to transplant out. I just have to figure out where I'm going to put those. And since I have these plants pulled out, I'll also show you the rhubarb. This is rhubarb that I started from seed and it's been getting really big lately. I don't know where I'm going to put this. It is a perennial for us. And it's my first time growing rhubarb, so I'm not really sure like what the best placement is for it. Um, but I'm pretty excited. It's really cool that I was able to grow these from seed because I think a lot of times you would grow rhubarb from maybe like crowns or started plants, but it was really easy to grow from seed and that makes it much more affordable. You can see how red those stems are on this plant. So the eggplant are the ones we're going to transplant then. For the ones we're going to direct sow, I have two different things. First is going to be corn, and we're going to try this in a raised bed this year. I think I can fit enough of them that we're going to get good pollination. This is the variety that we're growing, Golden Bantam. 80 to 85 days to maturity, and the stalks get five feet tall, which is pretty short for corn. Then we have some peanuts. These are peanuts that we grew last year and we saved some of them so that we could use them as seed. So here is one of the peanuts. This is a red peanut variety. This is our third year growing peanuts. Last year we saved our own seed and they grew really well, so we're doing it again this year. So I'm sure all of you know what a peanut looks like. You have the shell and then you have to crack it open to get to the seeds inside. And we're going to be planting the seeds without the shell. So we have to crack all of these open and get all of these seeds out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so that we can have that all set up before we get planting. Peanuts have been a really fun thing for us to plant. We only really grow enough where we can have like one or two meals with them. We just boil them in some salted water and enjoy them as like a nice seasonal treat in the fall. They do really well in our area. We live in Virginia and I think the peanuts really like the very hot weather here. You also need a really long season to grow peanuts. I think most of them take over a hundred days to mature. So these peanuts will be in the ground for most of our growing season because we do wait until the weather warms up quite a bit before we put them out. So you have to pick an area where you're willing to dedicate that bed. 
into the peanuts for basically the whole season. But what we're doing this year is I'm going to try and interplant them with our eggplant because I think that their growth habits will work well together. The peanuts will be almost like a ground cover for the eggplant. And I think that'll be a good way to get two uses out of one bed and we'll get two different vegetables out of the same space. Here's what we ended up with. That should be plenty for us to plant. Any of the ones that are more like shriveled up or dried out or moldy, we're not gonna plant with those. We're just gonna take the nice, healthy looking plump peanuts. Actually, one more thing we're gonna plant are these wax melon seeds. I started these in pots, but it's been probably a month or so and they still haven't germinated. So I'm gonna try and direct sow them. These ones from my experience last year, they did take a long time to germinate even though I followed the directions to soak the seeds beforehand. So I thought that they weren't going to come up when they didn't come up after like a month and then all of a sudden they did germinate. Maybe they just need like really warm weather so the ones I started in pots may still germinate but I'll just go ahead and direct sow these. And if the other ones do germinate them, we'll have two plants. So I'm soaking them in some water right now and then we'll pop them out along a cattle panel trellis because these plants get huge. This bed is the one where we're gonna plant our eggplants and peanuts and then this is the one that we're gonna plant our corn in. So both of them just have to be cleared out a little bit more. In our eggplant bed, we've cleared out our lettuce and kale already and I just have some leftover leeks from the fall and I'm just going to go ahead and harvest all of them even though some of them are still small. In our future corn bed, we still have a little patch of kale and lettuce and we're just going to try and get one more harvest out of that and then pull the rest of the plants out. So I was able to get a nice bonus little harvest of leeks. You can see how these leeks have a really long white and light green part and that's because when I transplanted these seedlings, I made a really deep hole and didn't fill in that hole. I did that same process when I planted my leeks this year so I showed how I did that in that planting video and I think the results turn out really well planting them this way. To finish prepping this bed, I have to move aside the drip irrigation for now. And then we are going to be amending this with some composted manure. I'm just gonna be using half of the bag for this bed because it is a little bit of a smaller bed. It's only three feet by six feet. The soil here is pretty nice and fertile as well. It feels really loose still and still looks really nice and rich from the compost that we added last year. We are just moving the mulch and any shredded leaves aside, especially because we did have a lot of slugs in this bed and they're probably all like sleeping in those leaves. So we kind of just move them out of the bed for now. And then we spread that compost on top. I'm placing the eggplants in the bed. We only have six eggplant seedlings, which is not a lot for this size bed. You can probably space them much closer, but that's because we are going to be planting the peanuts around them, of course. So I think with this really wide spacing, there is going to be plenty of space for the peanuts. So first we're gonna plant the eggplants. We are digging our hole and then adding a little handful of more compost along with a small handful of some garden tone, which will act as a slow release fertilizer to feed the plants as they grow throughout the season. Those roots are looking really nice and healthy. I started these seeds on March 3rd and all of these eggplants are the same variety. It is a long dark purple Asian eggplant. The reason that I had this idea to plant the eggplants and the peanuts together is because in the past we have dedicated maybe like half of a separate bed to our peanuts. And since they take so long to grow, I get so impatient having that space dedicated to something that is kind of just like a special treat for us. It's not something that I'm looking to preserve. And also the way peanuts grow is that they kind of want to sprawl onto the soil 
they send almost like these runners and when they flower they flower kind of close to the soil level and then those flowers will send pegs into the ground which grow the peanuts underground so they kind of need a lot of space to actually make contact with the soil otherwise they're not going to form the thing that you want to harvest them for so if we only dedicated half of a bed to them that's not a lot of surface area that the plants are able to reach the soil from so the way we're doing it this year, they will basically have the entire surface of this 3x6 bed because the eggplants will grow mostly vertically. They're not going to try and sprawl on the ground and the peanuts will also act as a ground cover. Peanuts are also in the legume family, which means that they can fix nitrogen from the air and fix it into the soil, which will also be really good for the eggplants because eggplants do need really rich, fertile soil. So this was just an idea I came up with. I haven't seen anyone else do this combination of plants before, so who knows if it'll work, but we will see how it goes this year. These eggplants will need stakes later on, but I'm not adding them just yet, and I'll show you why in a bit. But first we're going to mulch this entire bed. I thought it would be easier to mulch before we add our peanut seeds, that way we can just move the mulch aside and plant our peanut seeds right into these little spaces and leave them uncovered. That way we don't have to try and mulch around all of these seeds that are buried where we won't be able to see exactly where we planted them. So in the end, we made a little space for peanut seeds about every 12 inches. Obviously, if there's an eggplant right there, we're not going to plant where those are, but we are trying to just surround the eggplants and fill out this bed completely. So all we have to do is move that mulch aside and bury the peanut seeds into the soil about an inch deep and then we're not going to cover them back up with mulch so that they'll be able to emerge from the soil just fine. I really couldn't have planned this out better because we ended up having pretty much the exact number of peanut seeds to cover this entire bed. We did two seeds in each of these holes and later on we'll thin them down to one plant per space. So here's what our finished bed looks like with our six eggplants and then you can see all of those little dug in areas where we've planted our peanuts and again not covering that with mulch. And the eggplants look very nice and beautiful right now. The leaves look very perfect but I know that they're not gonna look this perfect if I do not cover these plants. We have a really bad flea beetle population here and in past years they have just wreaked havoc on my eggplant seedlings. Flea beetles are these really tiny little black bugs that hop from your plant so they're really hard to catch and I haven't found a good solution to get rid of them. I've tried DE and I've tried neem oil. Neither of those really worked. One thing that kind of works is those yellow sticky traps that you can use for fungus gnats, but it's not really that foolproof. It's only if the flea beetles happen to jump around where that is. And they have been so bad in the past that I have even come out here with like a handheld vacuum and tried to vacuum them up, but it just doesn't work that well. So I think the best thing to do is to prevent them from being able to reach my plants in the first place. You'll know you have flea beetles if you have these tiny little holes in your plants. They kind of suck the sap out of your leaves and it can really either stunt or kill your plant, especially if it is young. And I've never really had a great eggplant year before because the flea beetles have always damaged my seedlings. So this year, right away after we plant them, we are installing some frost fabric to act as a barrier so that these flea beetles can't get to the plants. We're just using some materials we had around. We have some rebar and then I'm using some half inch drip irrigation tubing to go over that to create hoops. You might have also seen in other areas of the garden, we've used just thicker wire instead of this rebar tubing situation. For the middle piece, we had this ladder mesh that we're using. So there are a bunch of different materials you can use to create these hoops. So there are a few ways to do this. And then I'm just covering this up with frost fabric. You can also use insect netting, but I already had frost fabric. So that's what I'm going to be using. And this barrier should protect the plants while they are young. Last year I did cover my eggplants, but I think I did it a little bit too late. I didn't do it right after I planted them. So it helped a little bit, but not as effectively as if I had done it right away. So I'm making sure to do that this year to make sure the beetles do not get established onto these plants. I'm going to try and leave this fabric on for as long as possible. 
Eventually, the eggplants will need to be staked because the fruit can get really heavy and if you don't stake or support them, the stems will snap. But until I have fruit on the plant, I'm gonna try and keep these covered. Another thing with eggplants is that they are actually self-fertile. They have both the male and the female parts in one flower, so they don't need pollinators to pollinate. They usually just pollinate by themselves by wind. So once these plants do start to form flowers, I might remove the fabric and then maybe just give each of the flowers like a little shake with my finger just to make sure that the pollen does get to the right parts of the flower but I shouldn't have to need to worry about bees or anything getting in there in order to get any of my fruit to set. So that's the plan. I'm hoping that this works and that my plants can stay really nice and healthy because my plants always look so nice in the seedling stage and then within a few days they are just like defoliated from the flea beetles and and it's really frustrating so I'm hoping that this is the year for us for eggplants so we installed the hoops and put the frost fabric on but then I realized we still had to reinstall our drip irrigation so we just had to pull that off real quick and then put our drip irrigation back and then we'll put the frost fabric back on and weight it down with some bricks Now moving on to the next bed that we have to prep and I'm just going through this patch of kale and lettuce and picking through what looks edible. At a first glance, it looks really full and lush, but lately we've been having a lot of rain and the slugs have been really active. So actually a lot of these leaves have holes in them. So I'm just trying to pick out some of the good ones before we pull out the entire patch. Kale can probably go on growing in our garden for a while into the summer, but it just isn't as delicious in the summer. It's not as sweet and it starts to get a little bit more bitter. There's also a chance it might bolt in the heat. In the past, I've tried to hold on to the kale for as long as possible, but now I think it's better just to pull it out and make space for something that's going to grow better in this season instead of holding on to something that is just barely getting by. In the summer, we also get a lot of those white cabbage moths that will lay eggs on the kale and the caterpillars will eat the leaves. So in addition to the slug damage, they're again, just not gonna look very good and they're gonna have holes all in them. So that's why we're just deciding to rip them out completely. Luckily, we have grown a lot of kale this spring and I have harvested a bunch of that and preserved it by blanching and freezing it. So that will definitely get us through the summer and into the fall where it will cool down and we can plant new batches of kale. We fed all of the kale that we pulled out to the chickens and I'm glad to be able to share some of the garden with them. These chickens have just been working so hard this spring laying lots of eggs for us and it's nice for them to have some fresh greens to peck at and this big patch of kale they completely demolished within like 15 minutes. We took a little break just hanging out with the chickens. It's always so fun just to see them scratching and pecking around and then back to that bed prep. So again, we are moving aside the drip irrigation and then we're just using the rest of that bag of composted manure that we used from the other bed. So it's another about half of a bag here. We had this one green onion that had been in here since last year and you can tell it's on its second year because it's getting huge. It looks almost like a full grown onion and it was starting to flower so I pulled that out. The soil in this bed looks really rich just like the other one. We must have just amended these two beds really heavily last year. So the soil looks plenty healthy. You might have seen we pulled out some big fat worms out of here when we were pulling out the kale earlier. But corn is a very heavy feeder, so I'm also adding a sprinkle of garden tone and we're gonna just mix that in to that top layer of compost that we added. Now I'm taking a stick and just marking out this bed. I'm just trying to split it evenly into one square foot sections. So since this bed is three feet by six feet, I'm splitting it into six rows along the long edge and then three rows along the short edge. And we're going to be planting one corn plant in the middle of each of these little boxes in the grid that I am forming here. So we will end up with a total of 18 plants. 
When you're planting corn, it's really best to plant them in blocks because they are wind pollinated and they need to have other corn plants around them in order for those kernels to be pollinated. In the past, I've actually planted our corn, I think in just rows of two maybe, and that has still worked out pretty well for us. We have gotten good pollination. I just make sure that when the corn is tasseling, I give it a good shake to get that pollen to distribute to the silks on the ears below. So I'll do the same thing here because most places do recommend that you plant corn in rows of at least four. So since I have a row of three here, it's a little bit on the short side, but I think we'll still have enough corn in this patch for them to pollinate correctly. So we're just going to make a little hole in each of these little boxes and we are going to plant two corn seeds into each of these holes and later on we can thin them down to one plant per hole. Another note about corn is that you don't want to plant more than one variety at once because Corn can cross-pollinate very easily and they do not do well when you do that because it's one of those things that cross-pollinates immediately into the fruit that you're getting that year and you might end up with corn that's inedible. I don't know if this is specifically true if you plant two kinds of sweet corn or if it's just if you plant like a sweet fresh eating corn and a dried corn. But either way, I usually just do one corn variety at a time. If I do want to plant multiple varieties, I will just stagger out the timing when I plant those. So if I plant these now, maybe in like a month, I can go in and plant another variety, just making sure that they don't tassel at the same time so that they don't cross pollinate. So we're all done with our corn planting. The very last thing we need to do is just to pop in those winter melon seeds that I showed you earlier. And we're just going to pop those in at the base of one of our cattle panel trellises. And hopefully these will germinate. Like I said, they might take a while, so it just might be a while till we see these start to grow. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the things that we planted out today. I'm so excited that our entire summer garden is in now and I'm excited to see how everything grows. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again in the next video. Mm -hmm.